So much has happened in the last two and a half months since I did the last Beanbag Diaries episode. So this is episode two of Beanbag Diaries where I pretty much sit on a beanbag in my home office and I just share life and work and career updates with you. I try to share mistakes that I've made or I'm making, opportunities that I'm thinking about. Um, I share challenges that I'm having and I really just try and use these episodes as a way to share more with you who I am as a person. Uh, I know the creators that I follow and that I love are people that I feel like I know, uh, even though I probably originally found them through their educational content. But Yeah, I think, you know, the long term success of a community online is when people like you and they're following you for you. So, yeah, that is my attempt in doing these and and just a way to, to connect more with this growing YouTube channel, which I'm so incredibly grateful for. So as I said at the start of uh, start of this, so much has happened in the last two and a half months. It really feels like a whirlwind. And now it kind of feels like time is standing still because a lot happened very quickly and unexpectedly and I'm going to share all of that with you and now it feels like things are kind of falling into place. So a really quick summary of some of the things I'm going to be talking about today so you know whether this episode is going to interest you, whether it's worth sticking around. I'm going to be talking about leaving big tech kind of unexpectedly. I'm going to be talking about taking a break because I hadn't taken a proper break in probably four years and I didn't realize I needed to until I took it. I'm going to talk about how I re-evaluated my career in recent months. And as someone who has typically always known what they wanted to do with their career, I found myself in a pretty tough spot, really rethinking, what what on earth am I doing? And I'm going to talk about putting myself in uncomfortable positions and gaining confidence. Not really gaining confidence, but regaining confidence. So yeah, those are some of the things we're going to touch on today. If you are new, I will quickly introduce myself. Hello, I'm Anika. I am a 30-something year old living in Melbourne, Australia. I'm multi-passionate and I'm really working on not describing myself as what I do for work. So I'm going to start by saying I'm multi-passionate. I love my career. I I love the world of tech. I love educating people and doing things that might just inspire one other person, which is really why I think I have this channel in the first place. Uh, I'm, I'm creative. This is my creative outlet. I run. I have a dog. I'm a female in the tech world, which is a fantastic and challenging space to be in. I'm a non-technical person in the tech world, which is yet again another challenging place to be in. I absolutely love solving problems with technology. So I've dabbled in the startup world for probably 10 years now and I took a break from that and went to go work in big tech companies and do that whole thing and now I'm back in the startup world and yeah all in all I just I love trying lots of things and I love having lots of things on the go at any one time or even right now it's 4 p.m on Friday I've tried to film this video so many times this week but something has always come up because I'm trying to fit it amongst a million other things that I'm doing. But finally, at the end of the week, I found probably like 30, 40 minutes to sit down and just just do this. And let's get let's get into it. Let's get into the elephant in the room, which I'm probably going to put in the title of this video, which is quitting big tech. So if you watched my last Beanbag Diaries, I think I shared about, oh, I was pretty open about the challenges I had in the last 12 months with um, a new role that I took in big tech, moving into like a group product management role, managing people, uh, which is which is what I always wanted to do. And I kind of find my, found myself in this position where I realized it wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do, um, at least not in the capacity that I was doing it in. And I basically just had a very difficult 12 months questioning myself, my my abilities, my confidence and my career. Um, Go and watch that episode if you want, but I basically talk about the the various things that I did to try and overcome that. And one of those things was getting a career coach, which was amazing. But look, I, I basically had this grand plan. I had this grand plan in November, 2023, of how I was gonna work through to the end of the year. And then I was probably going to consider leaving big tech 
early this year. And I had this plan, right? And I, all I had to do was stick it out for that amount of time. And then early December, I couldn't do it. I quite literally couldn't do it. And I'm going to play out for you what happened. So I was in a meeting on a Friday morning. This is a meeting that we used to have every single week uh, at, at work. And all I can say is I kind of feel like I had an out-of-body experience um, where I was in this meeting on Zoom and I was like looking at myself in this meeting on Zoom. I physically could not participate in this meeting. And I was like, I was the group product lead for the thing that we were discussing on this call. I had really been honestly faking it for quite some time in terms of trying to show that I was interested, but I simply wasn't. And it just got to this point where, yeah, I think my body kind of took over and it was like, no, you can't do this anymore. And I want to talk about the importance of having a supportive manager because that day I decided I just need to be pretty open and honest with the manager that I had at the time. And I told her that I was really struggling. And by the way, the reasons I was struggling is for the most part, I just did not feel aligned to that to that role. I loved the people management side of it. I really felt like I belonged in the group product manager position, but I didn't belong in the domain that I was working in, which was quite a technical domain. It was in like the developer platform um, kind of, yeah, develop a platform integrations, web hooks, or, you know, develop a tooling and capability space, which it just didn't, <laughs> me in that space did not vibe. And yeah, I, I just told her I was feeling and I, and I said that I wanted to take a break and all I can say, and I don't know if this manager of mine would ever be watching these videos, but I kind of wanted to just use that as an example of how your environment is completely shaped by the people you have around you supporting you, especially at work, how important it is to have a supportive manager. And yeah, I was fortunate that I did have that. And I pretty much just took a break immediately. So early December, I took a break from work and I basically didn't go back. Um, I had the opportunity to go back. I had the opportunity to change things around, maybe change my portfolio of products to be more aligned to me but in the end I decided it it I needed a bigger change so um, I was working at this company for about five years and I think kind of part and parcel with the kind of person I am where I sometimes like I need to change things up I need to try something new and I think I I was also becoming a little bit stagnant for that reason so yeah I guess my my message here is sometimes you can make the you can make the plan but things are kind of just going to play out how they're going to play out. Um, and something else I wanted to talk about is, is how hard it is to walk away from a job, especially some of those big tech jobs that like golden handcuffs, golden handcuffs is real. Walking away from stock and a really nice salary and benefits is really difficult. And I, I really think I stuck around longer because of that. And that's important, right? Everyone everyone is different, but yeah, that, that was important to me. And I definitely wanted to make use of that for as long as I could. But at some point, if you're not enjoying the work you're doing, it's it's just not worth it. And I and that's kind of the point that I got to. Um, especially when especially when you know what you want to do. And, you know, for me, I knew that I wanted to spend more time on content. I wanted to immerse myself back into the startup space. And when you're spending your full-time job, which is a big chunk of your time, doing things you don't want to do, it kind of just drains the energy out of you and you have no energy left to give to the other things that you actually want to be doing. So that's what I wanted to firstly start off by telling you, um, leaving my big tech job, the plan that I had and how it actually played out. So... Yeah, and so I ended up taking about two months off, all in all, and it kind of felt like the two months wasn't enough, which was such a big indicator for me that I needed that break. You know when you don't realize you need a break until you're on your break, and even when you're weeks into the break, you still don't feel rested, you still don't feel recharged? That is how I felt, and it probably like a month or five weeks in, I was like, okay, now I'm feeling like 
I could start thinking about when I'm ready to like do the next thing. So that was, yeah, a really big thing that happened. One other thing I really wanted to talk about today was, so there's the golden handcuffs thing, right? But there's also just being really comfortable in, um, in a job or in a position that you're in. And when you've worked in big tech, and I'm sure this is the same for lots of big companies, it doesn't have to be tech, but I really feel like when you work in big tech for a while, you get really, really comfortable and, and, and the compensation plays into that. But there are lots of other ways you get comfortable. You get comfortable with the way that company operates. You get comfortable with how, how you know, in a product management role, how product is done. You get comfortable with the way your engineering teams operate and your engineering process. Like, because that, all of that is a lot to learn when you go into a new place. And there comes a point at which you probably um, have outgrown the, the place that you're in, the people that you're working with and, and the products that you're working on. Um, and when that happens, and, and this is what happened to me, by the way, is I was in a place where I was so comfortable and I was no longer really feeling that challenged And this happened for long enough where it actually resulted in me losing my confidence. And confidence is something I really want to spend a bit of time on on chatting about today. Because I, what I wrote down on my notes was um, I lost my confidence because of my big tech job. And it's not completely because of my big tech job, but I kind of think it's a big part of it. And, you know, when I first started working at the company I was in, the first th- like three years was was amazing. It was a massive growth curve for me. I was learning so much. Every single year, I was taking on more products, and you know, I was very very fortunate to progress in my career there. But I guess after year three, I, I came into this like stagnation or this decline, and. Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't realize until I really looked back or until I got to this place where I was feeling terrible at work that I don't think I've been doing the kind of work that is best for me, the work that challenges me, the work that pushes me, the work that pushes me. And because then I give something a go and I hopefully do well at it, it gives me the confidence. Um, and yeah, like in summary, I... Overall, being a gen- generally confident person in 2023, I was not confident. I think 2023 was the year of the least confidence I've ever had, um, I would say, in life and work. And that's probably because the work part like stems into life since it's such a big part of, of life. So, yeah, I felt imposter syndrome. I felt doubtful about my ability I compared myself to others and I talk about this in my last episode but yeah it's it's now that I'm in a place where I'm feeling like myself again and I'm feeling confident again when I look back to me in 2023 it feels like a different person Um, and you know even through all of that I did some incredible things with my content and when you watch my content you probably think I was confident but don't be fooled I went through a big slump and and I think it's healthy I think it's like anything, it's really healthy to go through a dip in your confidence because then you're forced to do things to, to rebuild it. And I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place now, but I'm very much still actively regaining and rebuilding my confidence. So speaking of that, I, you know, 2024 is the year of like pushing, pushing myself to do things that make me uncomfortable pushing myself to do things that I used to very comfortably do years ago. Um, And yeah, putting myself in positions where I naturally may feel like I don't belong there or I shouldn't be there, which is, again, maybe a bit more of a female instinct as well. Um, But yeah, let me give you a a really quick, good example. So I'm really diving into this, by the way, like early in this year, in the first couple of weeks of 2024, um, there was a few things that I did. One, posting on LinkedIn. I always wanted to post on LinkedIn, but I just had this fear around what people would think. Absolutely ridiculous. And then I ended up sharing that fear with someone, actually my career coach, and we ended up creating an accountability system whereby we now hold each other accountable to post on LinkedIn every single week. And all I can say is that the first post was really damn hard. Only the first post. And after that, it became easy. 
just after the first post, I kind of stopped caring what people thought. Let this be a message to you that if there is something you want to do and you're scared, the first step will be the scariest because the first step starts and creates the momentum. It's all about sticking to the momentum. You've, you've taken the biggest step already. So yeah, that's, that's one thing I'd love to, I guess, really push out as a message um, in, this, in this beanbag chat today is please just take the first step. Now, the second thing that I've done in early 2024 to push myself into new and uncomfortable situations is um, uh, sign up for speaking on a panel about product market fit. And speaking on the panel itself is not that uncomfortable, but what makes me uncomfortable is the other people on the panel. So I was actually approached by someone who said, hey, I'd love for you to be on this panel. I'm, I'm really fond of your experience and I think you'd have some really valuable things to share at this meetup. And, you know, 2023 Anika would have thought, I'm, I don't have anything to share or what I have to share is not going to be valuable enough. For people coming to a meetup, going out of their way in the evening to listen to me, that is really what my default would have been. And in some ways that default is still there, like deep inside, but I am very consciously and proactively switching my default to be, yeah, why not me? Yes, my opinion is uh, is valuable and I should absolutely be on that panel and I'm not going to stop putting myself into these situations until that becomes my genuinely default default, if you know what I mean. Because yeah, like this is this is something that's said often, but think about how many people who are less experienced than you are putting themselves in positions where they don't have experience, but you might have more experience in that thing and you're doubting yourself. This year, I'm focusing on defaulting to I belong here. I should have this opportunity. I am the right person for this opportunity. Um, yeah, and I know what I'm talking about. I have valid experience. And yeah, I should be absolutely in the opportunities that I am seeking and the opportunities that seek me. So that's that's something that's a work in progress, but so far I think I'm doing good. And then there's a third thing I put myself out there for. Ah, this is um, on a slightly different track, but I reached out to a startup founder and I said, hey, I want to interview you for my YouTube channel. And mind you, we had some interactions in the past, so it wasn't completely cold, but she said yes. And we had a conversation this morning, actually, um, just to get to know each other a little bit. And it went really well. And again, that's a great example of taking that first step because the momentum has begun. And I, you know, I'm really hoping that this first conversation uh, or interview that I do, and I'm going to do it on this YouTube channel. Um, and by the way, you guys are going to really enjoy um, the product that this founder is building. I'm going to link it just in case uh, it is val valuable for someone. Um, there is absolutely no sponsoring involved here it's I genuinely think and, and we, her and I talked about that this morning is there's no one really doing this and that is creating um, training uh, and an online learning platform that is highly catered towards product managers who want to learn technical skills um, so yeah I'm going to be interviewing interviewing her in a couple of weeks and that's the third thing that is less putting me out of my comfort zone because I'm used to creating content and I feel very comfortable um, having that conversation with someone but just the process of making it an actual interview for my channel you know that she's giving me her time for uh, is yeah is a little bit out of out of my comfort zone but something at the same time that is giving me so much energy just after the call I had with her this morning I felt so inspired and excited and same as I, you know, had the conversations with this person who is hosting this meetup, like both of these things are weeks away, but in just taking those small steps, uh, it has given me back so much energy. And that is now energy that I'm using to film this video and energy that I'm, I'm using to, yeah, d do everything that I'm doing today. And, you know, when you feel inspired and when you feel energized, you just do better work. Um, and yeah, I was, I was liking this. I was liking this for the majority of 2023. So 
yeah, that's something I really wanted to, to share with you all. Um, I've got some notes here, so I'm just referring to that. What else is there? Um, I talked about, yeah, LinkedIn and I guess, I guess overall, I would say, you know, put yourself in a position where you can thrive. And I talked about this in the last episode where I felt like even though I wanted to progress in my product career and it was great to do that at a big tech company in a group product manager role for developer platform, that was not the place for me to thrive. Being a people manager absolutely comes naturally to me. And I think I throve, I think I thrived in that aspect of it, but I didn't thrive in working on a very, very technical product for a user type being the developer persona that I just didn't empathize with. So I think it's very important to put yourself in positions to excel. And that doesn't just mean putting yourself in a position where um, like, like, like putting yourself out there for opportunities, but it has to, it often has to be the right opportunity because if you are in the wrong place, you're naturally not going to um, excel. And this is something I realized through the career coaching that I did last year is um, I was comparing myself to, let's say other product managers, right? That I was working with more senior to me and junior to me. And I was comparing how I was doing to them until one day I realized I don't necessarily want to want the same things as they do. You know, maybe they're uh, trying to climb the hierarchy at a big tech company. So the way that they are going to approach their role and their job is going to be so much different from me because I, I knew that I was, I didn't want that. I did not want to progress to a director or a product at a big tech company. And had I had wanted to, I absolutely would have had a different, I would have, I would have, I would have excelled in a, I would have excelled in that role, but that's because I would have given it more effort or different effort or um, yeah, whatever it would have been. But because I knew deep down, this is not really aligned to what my career aspirations are, then that naturally doesn't make sense to compare myself to someone who is trying to get to get there. Um, so I guess, yeah, maybe a small reminder if like, you know, we all know we shouldn't compare ourselves to others, but just remember the the goal that you have is different to the goal that someone else has and therefore comparing yourself just absolutely doesn't make sense in addition to the fact that you're you're on your own path and you're on your own journey um confidence i forgot to mention something about confidence so yes i'm on this journey of gaining my confidence back and uh, as a result of that uh, it's, it's really funny how um, when you start focusing on something, you start seeing more of more of it. So, you know, I've had confidence in the back of my mind uh, for many, many months now. And I've recently just started seeing podcasts and YouTube videos and I think even books related to confidence pop up on my feed. And it's so funny because it's not like I've gone and Googled, how do I get more confident? Like I haven't done that. I knew it was just something I needed to like internally work on. But as a result of me being in this mindset in the last week alone, I've watched a really good TED talk on how to be confident. Um, I listened to a really great episode by a creator that I follow on being confident. Um, And I think, I think I listened to two podcasts actually. And yeah, it just, it just got me thinking about how the things that you focus on really do come into your presence and call me cheesy but I've I've taken these pieces of content that have popped up on my feed as a sign that um this like I am absolutely focusing on the right thing by proactively you know regaining and now I would say strengthening my confidence but um I'll link the TED talk that I listened to below because it was really good it was short and sweet and it was by the coach of a softball team or something like the coach of a, a professional sports team. And he had some really good analogies around how ath- uh, athletes um, build confidence. Like my biggest takeaway from, from him was practice. There is no way you are going to get more confident at something unless you just do it. And even if you, like, like every time you do something, 
just consider it practice, right? Like it takes the pressure off you to make it, to make it perfect. Just consider it practice. And the more times you practice, it's inevitable. It is literally inevitable that you will gain confidence from that. So yeah, that's, you know, that's another thing in the back of my mind is just putting myself out there for more and more um, opportunities is that hopefully by the 57th opportunity that I put myself out there for, it won't feel uncomfortable. I can't believe I forgot to talk about this, but after telling you that I ended up leaving big tech, I didn't even tell you what I am doing now, which, um, yeah, completely escaped me in, in talking about all of these other things. But I basically joined a startup, which I am so beyond excited for. Um, if you don't know my career journey, I have a whole video on that. I probably should film an updated one soon, but I'm going back into the startup world or I am back in the startup world. And I don't think I've been this excited and energized about my actual work in terms of like job work in a very long time. Um, actually, I just remembered something else I want to talk about. So I'm just going to write that down. Yeah, so I'm joining as head of product for a fintech and uh, it's a very exciting fintech because it's actually three products. So there's, it, it's basically a group, uh, a portfolio of products is what I'm calling it. So one is a digital banking app. Um, another is a digital or a nano gifting app. And I'll leave links to both of those down below. You won't be able to access them if you're outside of Australia, but just if you want to check out the websites. And the third is actually a brand new product that we're going to be building. Uh, and it's like, it's basically the vision and the future of the, the, the company. But the foundation of the company are these two products that we already have in market. So yeah, I've, I've done work cause I know that I know the founder and I've done work for them for many, many years, like ad hoc product work. Uh, I've also done some, I think I've done some social media for them as well. Like, you know, when you're in a startup, you just, you wear all the hats. So yeah, I've stayed connected with their journey. Um, uh, I know the team and the plan always was one day I would join and it was, it was just the timing couldn't be better. I was feeling, you know, the way I was feeling with, with work. Um, and then they actually ended up raising some money and, uh, were hiring the team and yeah, the two kind of naturally fell into place, um, in terms of me and my timing and their timing. So yeah, it feels at the moment, it kind of feels like working with friends um, I don't know everyone super well, but it's, it's six of us full time, um, soon to be more than six. I think we're likely to double the team fairly quickly as we hire the development team, which we are currently interviewing for. And then we have some investors who are pretty active. And then we also have some board members that, um, are fairly active as well. So yeah, it's, it's been a big week cause I, I did start on Monday and, uh, in just the last five days, I have learned, learned so much, um, and I feel uncomfortable, but I also feel like it is, it is the perfect place for me to be right now. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to sharing more about my experience. Um, I guess one of the, the really cool things about, I mean, really being the first product hire, um, and getting to establish all of that. I'll also be looking after like operations, um, whatever that means. I guess it means a lot is that, yeah, I get to establish a lot of things from the ground up. So, you know, at the moment I'm thinking about how I'm going to work with design. We do have a UX designer. I'm thinking about how, um, I want to, uh, manage the, the, the customer service, uh, process. Cause we do have customers. I think on one of the products we have 44,000 customers on the other one we have a few thousand but like there are customer tickets and we don't really have a customer support team so between myself and our head of marketing um, we're managing customer service and I want to establish you know a, a process for that that makes it easy for everyone before we have a customer support person dedicated um, how do we communicate things that we're getting through customer support to the dev team how do we plan right there's how do we do our weekly um, weekly planning in terms of like business priorities? But how do we do our dev planning? And yeah, just everything really, like things that I don't even yet know. 
Um, you know, simple things like creating the Slack workspace, which I did, <laughs> um, organizing our file storage system. Like these are all things you kind of just go into when you are working in a big company, but I think it's really good experience doing all of that stuff from scratch. And I feel fortunate in that I've seen, I've worked in companies where all of those things have been done well and not so well. And I feel like it's my chance to like take my cumulative experience of good and bad and, and yeah, put my own flavor on it um, and start, start all of that from scratch. So yeah, I can't believe I forgot to share earlier what I'm going to be doing next. So that's a, a bit of a, a, a big, a big life or work update. Um, I, I, what I haven't figured out is how I want to, and if I want to change any of my content, considering the shift in my role. So I guess I get a lot of questions and a lot of feedback on this channel around things that product managers do that I quite honestly haven't done myself in a long time. So, you know, I haven't spent like it's been it's been quite a few years since I've worked directly with a dev team at planning sprints um, because I I moved into the people management aspect of things. And even before that, I was managing a portfolio of products whereby it was really my engineering manager who did a lot of those things. Um, you know, I'm not spending the majority of my time with the development team because as you progress through your product career, you do balance the strict well, more. You end up doing, you, you focus more on the strategic versus the tactical day-to-day work. Um, but now, you know, being a very small team again and being the head of product, but also the only PM means doing all of that again, but, but in a different capacity in, in like startups are different to, to more established companies. So I want to think about how I can still provide valuable content for people who, who ask me those sort of questions, but, but share, share experience that is real time and relevant to what I'm doing, doing now. Um, but yeah, if you have any ideas or questions around, I guess, knowing what I'm going into or what I'm doing now, like, let me know because yeah, I can share my experience with starting, uh, you know, as being like the first hire in a, in a startup, but I can also share more real time, like document how I set things up, how I navigate the process of even knowing what to do, because, you know, I'm not spending like, because we're at the start of our journey, we're very much still hiring the team. Our CTO just started a few weeks before me. We're very much in the process of setting things up. Like we're not, we're not, we're not coding yet. We're not building the product yet. Um, even though we should be very, very soon. So yeah, there's lots of other things that need to happen before you just dive into writing the code and, yeah, it might be a really interesting thing to document. So, so let me know um, if you'd like that. And one of the reasons I'm really excited about stepping into this, the startup space again, and I guess this leadership role is the opportunities it's going to bring for me and my brand and my, my, um, I guess my brand as a professional and, you know, yes, brand is super important these days and you can establish a brand for yourself um, regardless of what you do for work, regardless of what role you have. But, you know, I'd be lying if I, if I, if I said I wasn't excited by having a leadership role at an up and coming fintech as a female in tech in product management, it's, I feel, I feel like it's the perfect amalgamation of my experience where I'm at in my career um, the brand I've already established and like where I want to go in the future. So it's after a tough 12 months of feeling super lost and confused and challenged at work, I feel like I needed to go through that to get to this place where, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the right things, but yeah, I'm excited to use my experience and now this role to attend more events, attend more panels. Um, today I actually, I need to apply for a woman in product um, speaking gig. So the woman woman in product um, have their annual conference and they have their calls for speakers out right now. And I want to submit um, a talk for that, which I've really left quite late, but um, I'm going to submit one nonetheless. And yeah, I think just having having that leadership experience and quite frankly, just 
being on the leadership team of a company really helps to boost your profile. Um, and I want to, to leverage that not only for me and my career and my brand, but also for the, the startup and the, the product that um, we're, we're building. So yeah, um, this video is probably getting a little bit long. So I want to end by talking or yeah, end by talking about goals. So, and this is me being super transparent and talking about where things you know, where I had, again, had plans that just didn't go to plan. So I had every intention and I set up a really great system for myself to film and post one YouTube video every single week this year. It's a non-negotiable role, uh, non-negotiable goal for me. And guess what? In week two of 2024, I screwed that up. And it would have been so easy to just say, well, it's week two. I've already messed up on my goal. So I'm just going to let it slip, but I'm not going to let it slip. Um, I was away for a few weeks while I was taking my break. I never talked about my break. I don't want this video to be too long, so I might not talk about my break, but, um, yeah, I basically posted one video at the start of 2024. And quite honestly, I put a lot of time into that video. I think I may have put like 20 plus hours into that video. So in a way I feel like it's four videos in one. It covers me for January. Um, it's the last video I posted before this one, um, all about product strategy and product roadmap. So please go watch it, um, especially if you are going into product road mapping, um, considering we are early in the year, or maybe you're going into road mapping for for Q2 or something. It's going to be super helpful. But yeah, I I planned out all of my content for January. I even planned all my content for February this video being one of them. So I'll be on track for this. And then I went away. Uh, I went to Japan for a few weeks and I quite literally went on a complete hiatus and I did not open my laptop for, for three whole weeks, which is probably the longest I haven't opened a laptop in a long time. But yeah, you know, I, I felt really, I was really hard on myself for a while because I, I posted a video talking about how I'm going to post one video a week, non-negotiable on YouTube. But then I put so much effort into that first video, which quite honestly, potentially burnt me out at the same time. Um, so I need to find a better balance of, you know, doing some videos that are super educational, super valuable, and maybe they're going to take me longer to put together. But then I can have videos like this, where it's just talking to the camera or shorter videos. Shorter videos are actually very challenging. Um, like being very succinct and to the point can be quite challenging. Um, but yeah, that's also something that I wanted to share with you that look, there's things that have been on my goals list that I, I think I'm doing really well at so far, but there's also things that were meant to be a top priority and I've already screwed up, but that's okay because I'm just going to carry on. And maybe at some point this year, I will post more than four videos a month, which should make up for January. And that is fine. So yeah, um, in the, you know, uh, in the flavor of keeping this super raw and real, I wanted to own up to that and share it with you. Um, and I'm sure there's other goals that I'm off track on as well, but that is a big one that, you know, is, is really apparent when I, I don't stick to it because it was, yeah, it was a, a weekly video. Um, and I think I've only posted one video so far in 2024, but it is what it is. Um, look, this video is getting super long and once I get on a roll, I actually feel like I have quite a lot to talk about actually. Okay. You know what I'm going to end by talking about? Um, I just saw myself in the viewfinder viewfinder and I remembered that one of the other things that I'm doing this year that I've gotten really bad at doing in 2020 over the last three years since 2020, um, because of work from home life is not really dressing properly. And this might sound really menial, but I've decided that in 2024, I actually, whether I'm working from home or I'm not, I'm actually going to put more effort into not like into my appearance. And, and, and really what that means for me is not wearing active wear every day, not defaulting to my gym clothes every single day because they're comfortable and I'm lazy. And, um, I have really noticed when I try and put a little bit more effort into what I'm wearing, it translates into confidence for me. And, and it, so, so this, this idea also stems from my, you know, re-strengthening my confidence is I really turn into a bit of a slop. Like 
working from home got me into that comfort zone where I was like, yeah, it's a waste of time if I properly get dressed. But maybe that also part and parcel resulted in me feeling unconfident. I, I don't really know for sure. But yeah, I'm making an effort and you know, you can't really see what I'm wearing today, but I'm wearing like a matching tracksuit. And it has made a huge difference to how I feel. It's made a difference to how I bring myself into calls. And just an example, um, I I jumped on a call this morning at 8.30 a.m., not a morning person. And the person I was meeting said, wow, it's so early and you look so put together. And, you know, I don't want to be seeking validation, but it was it was kind of nice. It It really kicked off my day. I felt good because I had put myself together, but just the fact that someone else noticed was also quite nice. Um, And yeah, that's something that I really want to take forward into the rest of this year is you you really, you feel, you feel how you look is kind of what I'm thinking, but that doesn't quite make sense. But I, I know you'll know what I mean. Putting a bit more effort, a little bit more effort into how I'm showing up Uh, not just internally, but also externally, I think is going to be a bit of a secret sauce uh, to me strengthening and maintaining my strength and confidence this year. I do think I want to make this a monthly cadence because I find that when I get going and I start, start talking to the camera, there often is a lot to share. I still don't, I had really good feedback from the last one. And honestly, even if five people watched this and two of those people got something interesting from this even if I helped you kill some time while you put me on in the background and you cleaned your house like that's fine because I do that and those videos are actually some of my favorites so yeah if you got this far thank you so much if you got this far actually leave a comment below saying beanbag and let me know if you like these videos tell me what resonated um, I really want these to be a way to like connect with the way someone else might be feeling about a similar thing that I'm going through. So let me know if you're going through any of the things that I shared in this video or, you know, share something that you're going through and maybe it'll spark an idea for me for next time. Let me know if you would be interested in me sharing content around, you know, being in a head of product role or being in a product leadership role at a startup and, yeah just thank you for watching if you got this far please look out for another video next week because i will surely be back on my weekly videos in february and i might actually document my big tech experience uh, because i think that will be an interesting topic to talk about so yeah i'm gonna leave it here um, and i will catch you in my next video bye